What's up guys, on today's episode, I'm gonna show you how to change a clutch and flywheel on any 79 to 04 Mustang. All right guys, so before we get started here, just so you're aware, um, this car in particular is a 2001 GT. It has the Tremec 3650 transmission in it. Uh, this is 11 inch clutch. It has a six bolt flywheel. And I know there are some changes over the years as far as some of them have a 10 and a half inch clutch with an eight bolt flywheel. You just gotta know what you have. Um, unfortunately, I don't really know what you own. With that said, the 3650 procedure and the T45 procedure is gonna be virtually identical. There's no changes whatsoever. Um, the T5 guys, the guys that have the older stuff or you have a V6, those are actually a lot easier because the, the bell housing is separate from the transmission. So you can drop the transmission separate from the bell housing. Um, the guys with the 3650s and the T45s like myself have to do it all in one big piece. So reaching the top bolts with the bell housing in place is pretty hard. So I'd anticipate if you're doing this on Jackson Jack stands, you know, figure probably the better part of a weekend if you're taking your time. But so with that, let's uh, get started. I'm gonna walk you guys through it. All right, first things first, because we're gonna be disconnecting the starter, you gotta disconnect the leads on the battery. All right, next thing I'm gonna do is pull the shifter. So loosen the, uh, the shift knob, pull this piece of trim up. Come around to the back and undo the plug. Set that off to the side. Then I'm gonna take the shift arm off and this inner boot, get that removed so we can get the transmission out. So this is kind of optional, this is gonna depend on what you really wanna do, but I'm gonna drain the transmission. Um, some of you may not wanna do that and that's fine. You can like wrap a glove around the back of the, the transmission where the drive shaft comes out of the back of it. But I know when you pull the drive shaft out of the back of the transmission, there's a pretty good chance you're gonna puke some fluid all over the floor and quite frankly, the fluid for uh, you know most of these transmissions is dirt cheap. They just take conventional uh, Dextron, Mercon, ATF, you can get, I don't know, you can get like a gallon of it for like 12 bucks. Not really a big deal. So rather than make a mess, I'm gonna drain the transmission. All right, the first big component that I'm gonna remove is gonna be uh, this H-pipe. We gotta get this out of the way to get the transmission out. So. There's some O2 sensors up here if you have a fuel injected car right at the, where, where the uh, exhaust manifold meets the H pipe. I'll show you where they're at, but they're, they're kind of buried. Um, as far as how to get them out, you know, I'm, I'm lucky. I got skinny arms and I can just stick my hands up here. It's not that big of a deal, but I'm sure if you're working on the ground, this is a totally different animal than uh, what I'm attempting here. There's just a, a push tab on these, even the ones up on the bell housing. Just a little push tab and pull release. So that's all the electrical connections to the oxygen sensors. We're gonna go ahead and get the, uh, the H-pipe unbolted. To remove the drive shaft, you're gonna have four 12 millimeter 12 point bolts that you have to take out of the uh, differential end of the drive shaft. And then once that's out, it'll slide right out of the transmission. And the drive shaft's out. So the next thing we're gonna go after is gonna be the starter. Um, for any of you that are already aware, there are three bolts on the starter and the top one is in a really, really bad spot. Um, it's up here by the exhaust manifold and in toward the engine block. So. Okay. 
So to get the third bolt out of the starter, the easiest way to do it is just get a quarter inch ratchet after you get this exhaust pipe off and just snake the ratchet up here and uh, you know, try and get it out. I tried uh, you know, using a bunch of extensions and universals and coming in from the front side and this is really the easiest way to do it. Um, so just get this, uh, this top bolt out. Like I said, I have this bottom one in here so the starter isn't gonna fall out, but you do have to get all three of these out to remove the transmission because the starter actually threads into the bell housing. All right, now that the starter's out of the way, I'm gonna deal with some of this other uh, ancillary stuff. So you got some wiring up here, you got this wiring back here for the O2 sensors that runs up the driver's side of the transmission. And I'm gonna zip tie all this stuff out of the way uh, and just try and get it you know, as far away as possible. Um, the other thing that we gotta deal with is gonna be the clutch cable. So this wiring, I'm just gonna stuff up here in the front and just try and get it you know, out of the way. I'm gonna kind of use the, the steering shaft to hold it in place where I need it to be. Um, but yeah, let's, let's go after the, uh, the clutch cable. So to free the cable uh, from the clutch fork, get a pry bar and stick a pry bar in here and just pry it forward. Push the cable up and through the, uh, the hole in the fork. So at that point, everything's nice and free. Uh, next thing you want to do, once you get the end of the cable, you know, freed up, you want to take this big E-clip out of the end of uh, the cable here. All right, so at about this point, um, you're actually going to start removing the transmission from the vehicle. So with this in mind, what I did was I got out my pull jack and put my pull jack underneath the tail shaft of the transmission so I can unbolt the transmission cross member. Now, to be able to get to the top bolts on a 4.6 liter car, you're gonna have to slowly lower the tail shaft and have the transmission drop a little bit so you can get a long extension and grab the top two bolts on the, uh, the bell housing. Um, if you guys are working with five liter stuff or V6 stuff or you know four cylinder stuff that has a T5 in it, uh, the T5 actually has bolts that separate the transmission from the bell housing so you can drop it in two separate pieces. Uh, this one, the bolts are actually on the inside of the bell housing going into the transmission from the bell housing side. So unfortunately without dropping the transmission I can't separate the bell housing from the transmission so I have to drop it all in one piece. Those top bolts suck, guys, I'm trying to get to them. It's just, they're super tight. And I can only imagine trying to do it on your back, but it is what it is. So as you take these bolts out, they're all different lengths. So pay attention when you take them out because uh, you may have problems going back together. You don't get them in the right spot. All right, now at this point, I've got all the bolts except for four out of the bell housing. I'm gonna go ahead and take those four bell housing bolts off, and hopefully we'll be able to just slide this thing back real easy, drop it down, and get it out of the way. It's just the dowel pins holding it right now, and I'm telling you guys, if your car is rusty, 
you're gonna fight this getting it off the dowel pins. Um, if you're gonna pry on something, be very, very careful because if you start prying against the engine block, I'll show you. Um, guys have actually broken ears off the engine block prying on it, trying to get this uh, transmission off. So use like a screwdriver like I'm using. Don't go in here with like a three foot pry bar and start yanking on it because you're gonna break something. The key seems to be lower the transmission as much as possible because I didn't want to get it on a bind where the tail shaft was tilted down too far. But the only way I can get this apart is I, you know, really drop it. Um, I think it just separated. I think I've got a wire loom or something holding me at the top. The bracket up top that holds the plugs for the O2 sensors that everything seems to be caught on seems to be free now. I'm going to try it again. All right, now the transmission's out, I'm gonna start unbolting the pressure plate. There are six 13 millimeter bolts holding the pressure plate in. It's like the transmission, I'm doing the top ones first, so I have the ones down here at the bottom that'll hold it in place, and then I can, you know, hold it up with my hand and pull it out of the way. If you're gonna use air tools on this, make sure you uh, hose it down with some brake clean first, so it, uh, you know, doesn't blow uh, clutch of dust all over the place. There we go. And I have to do the same thing. Put two bolts in it, get behind it. Fry on it a little bit, just make it pop free. Try not to bend up the separator plate while I'm doing it. There we go. Just be careful taking this off because uh, the edges of it are sharp, that's why I'm wearing gloves. There we go. So yeah, go ahead and pull your separator plate out of the way. Uh, I'm gonna clean this one up a little bit. I'm gonna hit it with a coat of paint real quick, just cause, you know, I'm a psycho. Um, and then we gotta get this pilot bearing out of here. Um, I'm gonna use the bread trick for any of you guys that uh, know the bread trick. That's how I'm gonna get it out of there. But uh, yeah, that's the next thing we're gonna do. All right, so to remove the pilot bearing out of the end of the crankshaft, what I'm gonna be doing is I packed it full of bread. So, I've seen a lot of guys use grease and do this. They'll pack the end of the crankshaft full of grease. Uh, I'm using bread because quite frankly it's cleaner, um, but grease works just the same. Now, I made a tool to do this. Now, I, I realize not everybody has the, the means and ability to uh, make their own tool, but the easiest way to do this is get a spare alignment tool, cut the, cut the end of it off, you know, where you pull it out and uh, you know, just hammer on that plastic alignment tool. But with that, basically, you stick your stick your tool in here, hit the end of it with a hammer, and keep packing this hole full of bread until this uh, bearing hydraulics itself out of the crankshaft. So you guys can see it is moving. 
but you just gotta keep packing it full of bread. So ideally, once you get this bearing out, you can just pull this bread out of the end of the crankshaft and it's like nothing ever happened. Pack there in that, that in there like that. It's moving slowly but surely. I don't know if you guys can see it while I'm hitting it. My arm might be in the way or whatever, but it's coming out. It's just gonna take some time. There you go guys, it just takes time. All right, now that the bearing is out, you should be able to just come in here with a screwdriver or something and pop all that, that bread I just packed on the crankshaft that should just pop right out of there. The other thing that you guys can use to do this, use a 3 8 extension with a 7 16 deep well socket. Uh, the 7 16 chrome wall socket will just fit inside the pilot bearing on one of these, and I'm sure you guys have one of those laying around. The nice thing is, by using bread, you know, it comes out in pieces. It's not just one giant gob of grease stuck in the end of the crankshaft. There you go. So I'll hit the inside of that with uh, some brake clean and you know wipe out the bread residue or whatever. But yeah, that's probably the easiest way that I found to remove a pilot bearing. But now that the block's cleaned off, go ahead and get your uh, block separator plate put back on. Um, you don't have to paint it obviously, but mine was out. I've got a little sandblaster, so painted it, made it look all pretty. Nobody will ever see it except for you and me, but. So if you take a look at this flywheel, I'm not sure how well you guys will be able to see it, but the, the holes for the flywheel only align with the crankshaft in one position. So it's kind of impossible to uh, get this thing on there wrong. So if you look right there, everything is um, lined up. Now I'm gonna put one bolt in this just so it doesn't fall off. As far as the hardware, I'm using all brand new hardware on this. Um, just for you know my own sanity and peace of mind, but you're gonna put a little bit of blue Loctite on all the hardware, just so uh, you know nothing comes loose, and uh, get all your hardware started. All right, so what you see here, the bearing on the left is a Ford bearing, and the bearing on the right is the one that came in the clutch kit. As you guys, if you look real close, you guys will be able to see it. The bearing on the left actually has larger rollers than the bearing on the right, and they're two totally different bearing numbers. The height on them is totally different. So with any of these pilot bearings or throw-out bearings, just buy the Ford stuff. Um, it's better than having to take the transmission back out a second time. All right, now we're gonna get our pilot bearing installed into the end of the crankshaft. Um, biggest thing to remember with this is make sure it's going in straight. So get this uh, pilot bearing started just with a hammer just to get it you know, started in the crankshaft a little bit. And if you have uh, bearing and seal drivers, you can use those. Um, the other thing you can use is just a socket if you guys don't have bearing and seal drivers. Um, just make sure that socket is only contacting this outside edge of the pilot bearing and not the middle portion because you'll blow the you'll blow the bearing right out into the crankshaft. You'll destroy the bearing. So just make sure you're going in straight when you're doing this. There 
There you go. And it's driven all the way in. All right, now at this point, we're actually ready to start hang, hanging the, uh, the clutch disc. But before we do that, we want to give a wipe down of, you know, the flywheel to get all the uh, shipping oil that it comes with off of it. You want to do the same thing to the backside of the pressure plate where the clutch disc actually rides on. So rather than spray down this whole a flywheel, spray it into a rag and then wipe it down that way just so you know you're not getting any uh, brake clean into that pilot bearing. All right, so at this point, if you want to write a uh, nice message to the next guy, this would be the ideal place to do it. Um, but with that, we're gonna go ahead and actually get the, the clutch disc and the pressure plate uh, lifted up onto the car. Sort of like the flywheel, I'm just putting in one bolt because I want to make sure this pressure plate doesn't come falling off of here under the floor. So for the pressure plate bolts, I'm using new hardware there as well. Um, again, I'll link, I'll link hardware down in the description. Uh, you guys can use what you want. Um, it really, Ford really doesn't specify in the, in the manual that I have whether or not they want you know, fresh hardware used or not, but I figured I'm in here this far. What's, what's another set of like six bolts? So I'm putting fresh bolts and everything, but um, that's totally up to you. As far as the torque sequence and the foot pound reading, I'll put uh, I'll put the torque specs down at the bottom for you guys, depending on you know what what engine and uh, clutch combination you got going on. But I'm using ARP hardware, and ARP specifies their own torque, so I'm going to use ARP's torque specification rather than the one from Ford. Um, if you're using stock replacement hardware, just follow the uh, you know Ford's recommendation that I'll put down at the bottom. But if you're using ARP hardware, go with ARP specification. All right, so before we go stabbing the transmission back in this thing, uh, there's a couple things we gotta do. First of which, I'm gonna clean up the face of this bell housing just where it's gonna mate with the block. Uh, just to get some of this rust and everything off of there, make sure it's nice and clean. Um, next thing we're gonna have to do is, you know, change, change the uh, throw out bearing, inspect the uh, pivot stud and all that stuff. So, got a couple things I gotta do in here. To clean up this face, I'm just using a white Rolock disc. Don't use a real aggressive sanding pad on here. You don't want you want to remove as little material as possible. I've actually cleaned head gaskets using this setup. I'll put a link up in the corner to uh, Ford Tech Light Make You Loco's video about this. Now that I have the face of the bell housing cleaned up, I'm going to go ahead and get the old clutch fork and throw up bearing removed from the bell housing. Um, once that's done, you want to go through and thoroughly inspect um, everything inside the bell housing. So you want to check the uh, pivot stud that the clutch fork rides on, you want to check the input shaft for any play or any grooves where the pilot bearing rides down on the end, and you also want to check the throwout bearing sleeve that the throwout bearing rides essentially on the outer diameter of the input shaft. Check all those three places, make sure there's no wear on anything, make sure you don't have any big grooves anywhere. If you do, you're going to have to replace one of those items. Um, I wasn't sure if I needed a ball stud or not, so I went ahead and bought one and just replaced it. They're cheap. I think they're like 10 or 12 bucks for a ball stud. Um, again, I'll link them down in the description for you guys. All right, over here at the bench, there's a couple things that I want to go over. Uh, first of which is the throw out bearing. Uh, as you can, I'm sure you guys can hear this one, but while you're in here, Replace the throwout bearing. It's cheap. Um, with that said, the kit, a lot of the kits that you buy come with throwout bearings, but from what I've experienced, um, they really don't last all that long. So my suggestion would be to go and get one from Ford. Now, the issue is when you go to get one from Ford, they're close to $60. And if you actually open the box, it'll have a part number on it. And that part number is 614014. That is a national bearing number. All Ford does is gets, they get rid of the national bearing box, they put it in their own box, 
and sell it to you for double the amount of money. So you can get these for like 20 or 25 bucks. Uh, like I said, the Ford ones are, I think nearly 60 at this point. And this is what's considered the heavy duty bearing uh, by Ford. Um, the other thing that you want to check is naturally the clutch fork. Uh, you know, check check the fingers where the uh, throwout bearing rides. Check the pivot. Make sure the pivot isn't all wore out. And you also want to check the front side where the the throwout bearing rides on the front side. Um, me, I'm just going to put a whole new clutch fork in it. it. They're like 75 bucks. I understand. You know, it probably doesn't need it. I could probably clean this one up and make this one work, but. Uh, quite frankly, I'm in here and I just want to do it once and get it over with. The throwout bearing sleeve isn't perfectly round and the end with the, the point goes toward the clutch cable. So before we begin any major uh, reassembly, I went ahead and changed out my ball stud. As you guys can see inside the bell housing, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and use the supplied spline lube that came with the clutch kit to lube the splines of the input shaft. Um, you have to be very careful with this. Don't put a ton of it on. Just use just enough to uh, to coat the input shaft. The reason is if you put too much on and the input shaft is spinning inside the bell housing, it has a tendency to sling off, get on the clutch disc. And if that stuff gets on your clutch disc, you're going to have chatter issues. Now that I've got lube on everything, I'm going to go ahead and put the new clutch fork and throw up bearing in. Um, it just pushes onto the ball stud. Um, takes a little bit of effort, but not a huge deal. All right, a couple things before you go putting the transmission back in or start jacking it up. Uh, one thing I like to do, you know, everybody kind of has a different school of thought on how to do this, but to align the input shaft with the clutch, what I do is I'll put the transmission in gear and then that way I can turn the output shaft on the transmission when it's up in place and rotate the input until it lines up and pops in. Ideally, that's how it works, but you know, everybody kind of has a different school of thought on it. But Give everything a once over uh, one last time before you know you go stabbing this thing back together. But uh, yeah, with that, let's get this thing back in. The next issue you're gonna encounter is gonna be that wiring harness that I had to deal with up top. Now, like I said earlier in the video, the guys with the T5 put the bell housing on first and then put the transmission in place. It's a lot easier um, than what this is. But in any case, um, T45 and 3650 guys, just watch the, uh, watch the wiring harness at the top of the bell housing. It's, it's kind of a pain to deal with, but you know, especially trying to you know, squeeze your hands up in here, but it is what it is. The other thing you wanna do when you put this thing back together is make sure you're not like taking the back of the transmission and shaking it from side to side because you're gonna take that input shaft and start screwing up that pilot bearing. You really want that thing to just go straight in the hole if at all possible. I understand it doesn't always work out that way, but ideally that's how it should go. So now looking at my dowels, I need to rotate, be toward the passenger side, so lift up on this corner just a hair to get it up on the dowels. But the, uh, the clutch appears to be lined up. The uh, splines of the input shaft are lined up. It's just a matter of getting this thing rotated a little bit. One quick note here, guys. If you look at the front of the engine, I actually had to put a pull jack underneath the balancer and raise the balancer up to drop the back of the motor to be able to get this transmission on. It helped big time. She just went, that was it. Now I gotta get some bolts in it real quick. Best advice I can give you is just stay patient. Um, you know, this transmission, in all honesty, weighs nearly as much as I do. So, for me to wrestle it around by myself, I mean, I understand I'm on a lift, but you know what? It's still kind of a pain. Just because you can't see what's actually going on anywhere. Like I told you guys when we were coming apart, the uh, some of the transmission bolts are different lengths. So, 
keep them separated as far as what goes where. Um, you know, just pay, like I said, pay attention to what you're doing. Take your time. All right, so I've got five bolts in the transmission. I'm gonna get my pole jack transferred from the front of the engine back to back here again. And then I'm gonna get this uh, hydraulic transmission jack out of the way. Um, and then I can try and get those two top bolts in. Before you guys go ahead and fire the vehicle back up, um, you want to adjust your clutch pedal. If you have a stock uh, quadrant set up that simply involves lifting up the clutch cut pedal with the, uh, the top of your foot basically pulling it toward you and then just pushing it all the way to the floor. Um, keep repeating that procedure until you get a clutch pedal back. Um, I installed an aftermarket firewall adjuster, clutch quadrant, and a new cable. I'll put a link up in the corner to that. Um, but yeah, we're gonna go ahead and start this thing up. Obviously, make sure your parking brake's on, make sure it's in neutral, and uh, we'll see what happens here. So what you wanna do is you wanna push the clutch in and make sure you have all your gears. If it doesn't go into gear, you need to adjust your clutch. Once you've done that, go ahead and take it for a test drive, make sure everything's fine. All right, last thing you need to do is take the car out for a test drive. Make sure everything uh, sounds all right, you don't have any strange noises. Make sure everything shifts the way it's supposed to. Um, most of these clutches, you have to run between 500 and 1,000 miles, you know, break-in period, so. Don't go nuts until you uh, get a couple tanks of gas through the vehicle just to break in the clutch. But uh, yeah, with that guys, if you guys like the video, as always, hit like. If you want to see more content, go down and hit subscribe. Thanks for watching guys.